Hello and welcome. Today I would like to share some resources that I have accumulated over some time about maker education, maker centered learning, and maker spaces. The slides are available for you at that bit.ly 2023 Maker Ed Resources. My name is Paul Shercliffe. I've been in education for about 25 years, mostly teaching physics and mathematics, but playing a lot with uh, coding and making and projects and a whole variety of things. I am on Twitter often, Shirky17. My website is my name, paulshercliffe.org, and my email is paul at paulshercliffe.org. I love chatting with people who want to do more with integrating making into learning, shifting the pedagogy to be maker-centered. So there are some hashtags you should follow, pay attention to. Um, TweetDeck often allows you to do some or, so you put like all four of those in one uh, search. We don't actually have a chat for MakerEd so much. We did it one time, um, but maybe eventually again. First thing you really want to do, uh, like with following those ha after after following those hashtags, create a network. Whether it's in your school or within your district or from district to district, local, um, you want to find the other maker educators to bounce ideas off, to talk with, to share uh, resources, tools, even. Uh, so work on creating your network. That's really really important to get better. You got to get outside of the class, outside of your room. Uh, see what the rest of the world's doing. Learn from other people. Uh, get to conferences like this. Get to workshops. That'll help you with creating the network too. Things, the places to follow. Make red, obviously. Autodesk Instructables. Instructables has a lot of neat projects uh, and instructions on there. Sometimes it's a neat project to have the kids create an Instructable. Um, Make Magazine, a nice magazine to get, or at least just the website to check out. They've got tons of projects. Maker Camp, good website. There's also a book about Maker Camp projects. Uh, Maker Camp is like summer camp for makers kind of thing. You know, if you could have one of those at your place, that would be awesome. Um, I forgot to put on here Remake Learning. Uh, Remake Learning is out of Pittsburgh. It's like in May. It's the idea of putting on an event. A one day family friendly uh, maker event to show how education could be remade with making. Some people to follow, maybe a couple companies too. Rob Ives has a lot of neat projects on his site, a lot of with uh, Automata is a lot of his stuff. Uh, Brandal Gadgets has a ton of uh, projects and ideas. And they also sell some, uh, some uh, materials, equipment, uh, paper circuits. Uh, kind of thing coding a little bit um, stem kits engineering with paper nice website to check out for you know, designing things with just paper which is a great source to start with uh, Trisha Fugelstad uh, her Fugel phone website uh, a lot of great projects I mean you just got to see what other people are doing Stu Lowe, Rob Morrill and um, HL Mod Tech a uh, couple play three people to follow um, a lot of 3d printing coding and robotics kind of thing maybe some laser cutting uh, projects to check out to share John Spencer created this uh, when kids develop a maker mindset because that's really what we're after mindset and culture um, I want to make sure you had this graphic to share about why you're doing things and we want to help the kids develop this maker mindset and this is why Really important that they become problem solvers, that they're divergent thinkers, they make connections between ideas, uh, creative risks, engaged, uh, the em empathy, uh, they become explorers. You know, it's, it's important that, that we're trying to create, we're trying to create thinkers. Um, I love the, uh, the, at the end of uh, uh, the Disney movie, George Clooney, uh, Tomorrow World, you know, we're looking for dreamers. That kind of thing. So we're trying to help create that. So I have compiled a couple years ago, as you see, 2020, um, a list of basically virtual maker sites. It's a list of about 80 websites where kids can design and create uh, browser-based stuff is what I was just trying to find. Things that were Chromebook friendly. 
Um, it could be coding, it could be uh, actually um, vector design, some of it's music, um, some of it's avatars, uh, so it's a whole variety of things on there. So the bit.ly there, bit.ly virtual maker, the V and the M are capital. Uh, circuitry, 3D design, variety of things. So you might want to you know check that out, see what you, you, your kids can play with, what you want them to play with. Uh, gears, designing gears, all sorts of things that can then be just left there or taken. Like one of the you know, some of the some of the design stuff can be you know, sent to laser cutter or you know 3D print itself, 3D design sent to 3D printers, things like that. Now, number one issue for all people doing maker maker spaces is storage because you got stuff. You just got tons of stuff. You got to have stuff to create with, and then you got to have places to put projects. Um, it's a number one issue for everybody. So it's, you're not alone if you're having trouble managing this stuff. I, I like portable uh, as much as I can. Uh, interesting things that you can do. You know, look at people. You know, look at places that are already doing things. You know, shelving, shelving that can be double as, as project boards, even. Um, mobile craft carts. Uh, label things with uh, names and pictures. Names and pictures, really important. I mean, a little a tool bucket. You know, it, these could all be makerspace stuff. These don't have to be garden stuff, right? Um, so storage, really, really important. I don't like a lot of permanent shelving and permanent cabinets. It, it, it just makes me, the, the room gets, seems so fixed and it the, the can't be done with it. Nothing can be done with it. Um, I mean, just basic shelves on Amazon, on, on wheels. Um, shelves could have bins in them. That would be fine. I, so you can do that for like robotics parts, right? Or, or I'll make your stuff. But again, you know, label them with names and pictures. Now, Baker's Rack is a neat thing for projects because you can have uh, various uh, height shelves. You don't have to put a project on every shelf, right? So, but if you make these shelves, they're stuck in height. So it's a Baker Rack kind of thing. You get it at a web, web, web restaurant, I think, is like the store I found this at. Um, now, we're all talking you know, like 100 ish, 130 for these things. Uh, but you know they can all be moved around, put where you need them, put out of the way, put in the hall, uh, doubled up on each other to, to save space, and then pulled apart when we need them. You know, pulled separated when we need them. So you know, that's why I kind of like um, portable stuff. You need lots of totes. Clear totes are important, so you can see what's inside it, even though you've labeled it with names and pictures. You still want to see inside it. Um, you know, rolling carts. Because uh, sometimes you gotta you gotta move stuff around or take it to somewhere. I know of places that they put it put all this stuff in carts, put it in a room, and then pull it out of the room and send it to classrooms um, when they need them. Um, I like these husky tool carts to put all these little totes in. I think I can fit like ten of these little six quart totes uh, plus some other stuff in this ten. Yeah, six, yeah, like ten in this husky uh, tool cart. I mean, it's not too heavy to carry. To, like pick up and put it in a car if I need to take it somewhere and it's got these nice big wheels um, you know get stuff on wheels important lots of different size totes because you have different amount of things that you need and you don't want a, a massive tote with tons of things in it uh, look at stuff look at Michaels and Duane fabrics and Dollar Tree for storage things I mean Michaels and Duane fabrics are about crafts and craft storage so learn from them buy stuff at Dollar Tree that works um sometimes you just gotta go uh like like i think these are like menards so menards home depot lowe's um you know what kind of tote are you do you like uh rubber made stuff you know for the kitchen it works because you need various sizes for various things um now cardboard is really important for all maker spaces and so is paper so one thing you really need to have in every, if you have a maker space, is these posters about uh, three paper attachment techniques and cardboard attachment techniques. And it should be like a first project for kids to do, um, to make these posters about how the different ways to attach. So you're not just doing tons of hot glue and tons of duct tape, because you don't need tons, right? 
Um, so that should be a first project. Now, cardboard is so important. There are certain cardboard tools that you really want to get. So there is a list of cardboard tools and accessories that you're going to want to get, like this electronic cutter and the actual cardboard scissors and cutting mats. So bit.ly slash cardboard tools, the C and the TR capitalized. Um, obviously, you don't have to get everything on the list, but I'll get you some, some thoughts there. Cardboard's important. Where do you find the cardboard? You dumpster dive. Um, you, have, you find it anywhere. You ask the kitchen for boxes. Um, you can use food box cardboard even. Have people bring in cereal boxes, right? Um, you, you go find it, um, and then you got to cut it up and cut the boxes apart. Don't leave boxes as boxes because when the kids get a box, they just use it as a box. That's not what we want. So they want to, you know, the kids are going to love using this tool to cut the cardboard apart. They really are. Um, and then you got to figure out how to store it. The tools and materials, there's just an infinite list because everything in the world, including dirt, is a maker material. Um, so we've, we've, well, we've created a list to help people, you know, do some thinking. Um, the first one, J.C. Maslick started, Dr. J.C. Maslick out of, out of Pittsburgh area. Um, like a getting started list of low cost, uh, no cost, low cost, and budget breaker kind of things. Um, but just everything, anything and everything. Um, not glitter, right? Not glitter. We don't do glitter, right? Uh, buttons, beads, uh, coffee stirs, uh, pipe cleaners, uh, pom poms, popsicle sticks, um, cardboard, um, rubber bands, uh, glue, hot glue, uh, cardboard. Colored pencils, uh, scissors. Uh, but so there's a, a little list for you to, to look at some things. Yeah, anything or everything. Uh, ask for recycled things. Um, pop tops, pop bottle tops. You need round stuff at all sorts of times, right? Um, so when you ask for stuff, be very specific and have a time frame um, that you want to collect things. Uh, so try and be specific with people. Give them a special, a set list. Um, dumpster dive and ask for people for stuff. Um, now, we got a bigger list because uh, sometimes you want to step up to bigger tools and digital tools. So we also created this bigger A to Z list kind of thing. Um, whether you want, you know, sometimes you, you do need to step up to big tools, but that doesn't make you a makerspace just because you have big tools, right? Doesn't make you a maker educator just because you got big tools. Um, but they are important to step to digital. I like having that Cricut Cameo there to, to get a step into digital creation because uh, now measurements are really important because it will cut things exactly, right? Um, 3D printers, nice to have too, uh, except they take so much time to do anything. But that is what it is. Uh, laser cutters are just so, exp oh, so expensive. Vinyl printer cutters are so expensive, but they do awesome stuff when you can get them and when you can afford them. Um, but so there's a whole big A to Z kind of list of materials kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's endless, right? Anything and everything. Why do you got so much junk in your room? Cause I don't know if the kids are going to want to use. So I just got stuff. Now books, lots and lots of books. You should have books. So there is a list of about a hundred or so books that I put together, uh, that bit.ly makerspace books. Um, and I broke them up into categories for students, projects, and teachers. I think you should get some books and just scatter them around for the teachers to read. The two top books about uh, maker-centered learning and maker spaces, maker education, are uh, Ventil and Ventilearn and Maker-Centered Learning. Uh, these are the two top books in this category, uh, really are. So definitely get those. Um, Dale Doherty, kind of the father of the maker movement with Make uh, Magazine, you know, his free to make about how to, how to get the maker movement changing the world important. And Mitchell Resnick's Lifelong Kindergarten. Yeah, we should be doing things more like we should be doing kindergarten. Uh, cultivating Creativity, his, his projects, passion, peers, and play. Important concepts for everyone to, to get and understand. It really goes along with maker um, education. Um, if you need shorter reads, for your, for your teachers to get to get a, get their appetite whetted, um, Laura Fleming has a couple of short books. One's Worlds of Making, 
and uh, Nick Provenzano. Laura is out of New Jersey, educator, and Nick Provenzano is an educator out of uh, Michigan. Um, the Maker Mentality by Nick. He's got another one too, I think, Maker. Um, I forget what. You need books with projects. Just have around, give people ideas. Um, here are three. There are tons. There was a whole bunch on that list. Uh, but here's some pop, important ones I popped. Uh, you could find the Makey Makey project book. You can find a Microbit project book. I mean, you cannot find all sorts of uh, project books. For These just give you some variety. Um, have project books. Um, kids books. Uh, read alouds. Uh, picture books. Uh, books that go along. I think every book has a project and every project has a book. Really important to uh, to play with. The, the connection between making and literacy really important and really helps. Uh, so remember to utilize books whenever you can. You know, magnificent thing. Lori Hawksworth, true, you know, true story kind of thing, right? So get books. If you're still not sure about Winemaker, I want to make sure that you saw the World Economic Forum's um, Top 10 Skills of 2025. All those are fostered through uh, Maker Education. So that's, uh, I want to make sure you saw that list. Um, again, Maker, we're trying to create a mindset and a culture um, that they can do things and affect the world and have an impact on the world uh, that they can fail and it's not going to be uh, the end that it's just you know, the next one more iteration right that they get used to doing things and learning through uh, not getting it right the first time mindset and culture important things to for us to create thanks for spending time with me there again is the bit.ly to the slides. There's my contact information. I love chatting and helping people talk through ideas about maker spaces, maker-centered learning, uh, maker ed. Have a great day. Bye.